Hello and welcome to the daily Bible readings for the 15th of September, which are 2 Kings 21, Ezekiel 11 and Luke chapter 7. So now reading with you from 2 Kings in chapter 21. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign and reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hephzibah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, after the abominations of the heathen, whom Yahweh cast out before the children of Israel. For he built up against the high places, which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. And he reared up altars for Baal, and made a grove, as did Ahab king of Israel, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served them. And he built altars in the house of Yahweh, of which Yahweh said, In Jerusalem will I put my name. And he built altars for all those of heaven in the two courts of the house of Yahweh. And he made his son to pass through the fire, and observed times, and used enchantments, and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of Yahweh to provoke him to anger. And he set up a graven image of the grove that he made in the house, of which Yahweh said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name for ever. Neither will I make the feet of Israel to move any more out of their land, which I gave their fathers, only if they will observe and to do according to all that I have commanded them, and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. But they hearken not, and Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom Yahweh destroyed before the children of Israel. And Yahweh spake by his servants the prophets, saying, because Manasseh king of Judah hath done these abominations, and hath done wickedly above all that the Amorites did, which were before him, and hath made Judah also to sin with his idols. Therefore thus saith Yahweh God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such evil upon Jerusalem and Judah, that whosoever heareth of it, both his ears shall tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria, and the plummet of the house of Ahab, and I will write, wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth a dish, wiping it and turneth it upside down. And I will forsake the remnant of mine inheritance and deliver them into the hand of their enemies. And they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies, because they have done that which was evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt, even unto this day. Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to the other, beside his sin, wherewith he made Judah to sin, in doing that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, and all that he did, and his sin that he sinned, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Manasseh slept with his fathers, and was buried in the garden of his house, in the garden of Uzzah, and Ammon his son reigned in his stead. Ammon was twenty and two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Meshulameth, the daughter of Haraz of Jotbah. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, as his father Manasseh did. And he walked in all the way that his father walked in, and served the idols that his father served, and worshipped them. And he forsook Yahweh God of his fathers, and walked not in the way of Yahweh. And the servants of Ammon conspired against him, and slew the king in his own house. And the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against king Ammon. And the people of the land made Josiah his son to reign in his stead. Now the rest of the acts of Ammon, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And he was buried in his sepulchre in the garden of Uzzah, and Josiah his son reigned in his stead. Reading from the prophecy of Ezekiel and the 11th chapter. Moreover, the Spirit lifted me up and brought me unto the east gate of Yahweh's house, which looketh eastward. And behold, at the door of the gate, five and twenty men, among whom I saw Jeazaniah, the son of Azur, and Pelatiah, the son of Beniah, princes of the people. Then said he unto me, Son of man, these are the men that devise mischief and give wicked counsel in the city, which say, It is not near. Let us build houses. This city is the cauldron, and we be the flesh. 
Therefore prophesy against them, prophesy, O son of man. And the spirit of Yahweh fell upon me, and said unto me, Speak. Thus saith Yahweh, Thus have ye said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that shall that come into your mind, every one of them. Ye have multiplied your slain in the city, and ye have filled the streets thereof with the slain. Therefore thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Your slain whom ye have laid in the midst of it, they are the flesh, and this city is the cauldron, but I will bring you forth out of the midst of it. Ye have feared the sword, and I will bring the sword upon you, saith the Lord Yahweh. And I will bring you out of the midst thereof, and deliver you into the hands of strangers, and I will execute judgments among you. Ye shall fall by the sword, I will judge you in the border of Israel, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh. This city shall not be your cauldron, neither shall ye be the flesh in the midst thereof. But I will judge you in the border of Israel. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh, for ye have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgments, but have done after the manners of the heathen that are round about you. And it came to pass, when I prophesied, that Pelatiah the son of Benaiah died. Then fell I down on my face, and cried with a loud voice, and said, Ah, Lord Yahweh! Wilt thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? Again the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel holy, are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get you far from Yahweh, unto us is the land given in possession. Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, I will even gather you from the people, and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations of from thence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh, and that they may walk in my statutes, and keep mine ordinances, and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things, and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith, Ye saith the Lord Yahweh. Then did the cherubims lift up their wings, and the wheels beside them, and the glory of the God of Israel was over above them. And the glory of Yahweh went up from the midst of the city, and stood upon the mountain which is on the east side of the city. Afterward the Spirit took me up, and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea, to them of the captivity. So the vision that I had seen went up from me. Then I spake unto them of the captivity, all the things that Yahweh had showed me. Reading with you from the Gospel of Luke and chapter 7. Now, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion's servant, who was dear unto him, was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him insistently, saying that he was worthy of whom he should do this. For he hath loved our nation, he hath built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marvelled at him, and turned him about, and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent returning to the house found the servant whole that had been sick. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of disciples went with him and much people. 
And when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying, that, there are, that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. And this rumour of him went forth throughout all of Judea, and throughout all the region round about. And the disciples of John showed him all of these things. And John calling upon him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities, and plagues, and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. And Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And when the messengers of God would, of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out to see in the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in king's courts. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, Among those that were born of women, there is none greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God, being baptised with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptised of him. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the, man, the men of this generation? And what, and to what are they like? They, that are, like unto, they are like unto children sitting in the marketplace, and calling to a, another, and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. For John the Baptist came neither to eat, came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say he hath a devil. The son of man is come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. And one of the Pharisees desired to see, desired him that he would eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and sat to meat. And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, behold, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Now when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say with thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which, which had two debtors. The one owned five hundred pieces, and the other fifty. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which one of them will love him most? Simon answered him and said, I suppose that he to whom... He forgave most, and he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman, and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore, I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little.
And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace.